All right, good afternoon, matriculants. Uh, trial exam is underway. Final exams are also here. So what I want to do today is touch on some ratios. There's a lot more videos going to be coming up in a couple of weeks. And so, um, you know, you just, just brace yourself. So uh, I'll be uploading it on YouTube, um, on my YouTube channel, uh, as well as uh, on Google Classroom as well. So we're going to start off. We've got the November 2014. That's what I'm doing today. Ratios and analysis. I'm not looking at the cash flow. I'll do some cash flow videos in a couple of days from now. But I'm going to have a look at the net asset value, 4.4 all the way down, some theory questions. So um, calculate the following financial indicators for the financial year in the 20th, 2014. Net asset value per share. So I'm also going to take you to some notes and then you can also see. So net asset value per share is the intrinsic value of the shares. It's like a more realistic picture of the value of a share and this is how you calculate it ordinary shareholders equity over number of shares issued times a hundred now your ordinary shareholders equity is made up of your ordinary share capital and retained income it's these two and it's given to us here eight eight three nine uh, triple zero so obviously it'll be eight eight three nine um, triple zero and uh, divided by and if you look at the, I keep referring, number of shares issued. So you've got to be careful. The number of shares issued is the value of shares at the end of the financial year. Have a look at the question. They will tell you here, 1,200 was beginning. They, they put, I mean, they, they issued a further 300,000. They have now issued 1.5 million shares. But then they repurchased 500,000, I mean 50,000. So you've got 1.45 million shares left. If they didn't give you this ending, you could have just take the, the beginning plus what you issued minus repurchase 1450 shares. So 1,450, 1,450,000 shares, right? And uh, uh, you'll find I'm just trying to write uh, <laughs> however I can, but you understand what's going on. All you do now is you divide this. So... I'm going to take my calculator, 8839, and calculate. And obviously, remember, times 100, right? So that's formula, and there's it here. And uh, so we can get going. And I get 609 point, this answer is always in cents, 609.58. Now listen carefully. Convert it to um, uh, one, you know, a whole number, and this comes to, 610 cents which is effectively 6 rand 10 cents per share 6 rand 10 cents per share all right that's your net asset value per share starting again you take your um your your uh, share uh, holders equity divided by number of shares at the end of the year all right now debt equity ratio is always non current liabilities loans any loans that we have, non-current liabilities, is to shareholders' equity. Right, shareholders' equity is a very straightforward ratio. Um, shareholders' equity, you know, we, we got it in question number one. Uh, that is uh, 8839 000. 8839 000. And the loans. We're going to check if there's any loans. Now, share, uh, debt equity ratio, uh, uh, it gives us the capital structure of the business. It tells us where funding is coming from, whether it's more from capital uh, investments or uh, from uh, 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 loans. So we're going to check now and see, uh, and we go to the extract from the balance sheet. Here is the loans, 908,000. Do you take that? You put it there, and debt equity ratio tells us the risk of the business, the degree of financial risk. Is it being funded more by loans? And uh, we're going to get to see. Um, so anything below 0 0,4, 0 0,5 is sort of low risk. And when I divide, I get 0 0,10 is to 1. Now, when you're doing ratios, it's always advisable to have it as one decimal place. So 0 0,1 is to 1. I want to try and get going as quick as possible. The next one I need to quit. Now, this 4.5, guys, is a common question. I want you to listen to me very carefully. When they say, commence on the liquidity position of the company, quote, three relevant financial indicators, actual figures, ratios, percentages, and their trends. Simple. 
the, the three ratios that involves liquidity, liquidity is the ability of the business to pay off its debts. Look, you can use, uh, you can use four ratios. I'm going to show you these four ratios just so you know. You can use the asset to, uh, current ratio, asset test, stock turnover rate, average debtors. Actually, you could use six of these if they are given. Now they are asking us for three ratios. I will use current and asset test and we could use stock turnover rate. We could also use debtors. If they give four, you can use the four. It doesn't really matter. But you want to save time in your accounting paper. So let's go and have a look at it. I see current ratio for both years is given. Um, I see stock turnover rate. It's a liquidity. You can even make a note. One, two, three, four. Now let's have a look at it. They want us to, I've chosen my ratios. If you look at the question, financial indicator one, you can say current ratio. Right, current ratio. And then the trend. What happened? Uh, did it increase or did it decrease? Current ratio. You can say um, uh, it, it changed. Uh, so you can say it, it changed so you, it, where it was. It was uh, last year, 2013, 3.6 is to 1 to 1.6 is to 1. I'm not yet commenting. So 3.6 is to 1 to 1.6 is to 1. Um, so you can even say uh, here, you can say decreased, right? Decreased. Um, so we're explaining, or we're just saying the trend. Financial indicator two, asset test. You're getting marks for all of this. So asset test ratio, current ratio, all are liquidity ratios. Uh, asset test ratio, um, and then you could say um, here it was 3.1 is to 1 to 1.2 is to 1. 3.1 is to 1. I should have put is to 1 here, um, and. Uh, and it dropped to 1.2 is to 1 and 1.2 is to 1 and uh, financial indicator 3 um, we could use the uh, I saw they had stock turnover rates uh, 5.1 times to 6.8 times so pretty good that right and you must state the name of it stock turnover rates um, very important uh, because they say you need to indicate right stock turnover rate um, and that was obviously uh, I saw 5.1 5.1 times uh, to 6.8 times um, and uh, 5.1 and here there was also a decrease um, and here there was an increase now we need to comment so I'm going to try and go as quick as we can um, look I know there was a decrease in the ratios. I know, you know, in generally we, we we like to see an increase, but sometimes what happens is it's too high. It could be too much of stock being tired, etc. But I'm pretty happy here. Is you can say in general comment um, the liquidity has improved. I'll tell you why. The liquidity has um, as uh, generally improved. Um, generally improved and um, so listen to me sometimes I might not always write it down I might just say it so you got to listen the liquidity is generally improved is because um, you can see that 3.6 is very high the norm for a current ratio is usually uh, 2 is to 1 uh, and then the asset test uh, 3.1 is also pretty high so um, it decreased in 2014 which shows a more realistic value um, the stock turnover rate as well increased. Now that is good because stock turnover rate means stock is being sold much more quicker, which means funds are coming in, greater profits. Um, so that is good for the liquidity. Then you're able to pay off your debts because that is what liquidity means, the ability of the business to pay off its debts. And uh, one thing you need to also make note is that the debtors collection dropped or rather sorry increased that means debtors are paying slower and this needs to be in the next financial year sort of rectified or it needs to be uh, discussed and, and, and there need to be some sort of uh, decision being made uh, debtors need to be contacted that they need to pay on time uh, but uh, by increasing shows debtors are paying much more slower means cash is coming in probably will take longer to come in but in terms of a liquidity position yes the liquidity position of the business 
has improved. I know that the ratio is decreased, you can see there, but we're seeing a little bit of a more realistic picture of what it should be. Um, and also the stock turnover rate increase, which means stock is getting sold much more faster. So those are the three things you can use to uh, comment. Um, then we've got you, the director decided to increase the loan during the current financial year. Code 2 financial indicators, actual figures relevant to the decision, explain why it was a good decision or not. Now, this is the first thing you'll do. Check your debt equity ratio. Number one, debt equity ratio. Right. Check last year and check this year. Uh, if it was the same or it decreased, very good. Low financial risk. So debt equity ratio last year um, was 0 0.1 is to 1. And this year we calculated it to be um, as well 0 0.1 is to 1. So uh, you can say that, that uh, uh, debt equity ratio, uh, very quickly, debt equity ratio uh, stay the same. 0 0.1 is to uh, 1. Um, 0, 0,1 is to 1. And then the return. This is the next one, guys. This is very important. If you want to know um, where it was good to that they took the loan, you check the ROTCE, return on uh, total capital employed. If it is greater than the interest rate, very good. Let's look at this year's. It's 18.8%. Um, and then you check um, the, uh, uh, the, the interest rate of the loans. And the interest rate of the loan is 12.5%. Excellent. Um, so what you can do is you can say the ROTCE is 18.8%. Um, uh, higher it is uh, higher than uh, loan interest rate. Uh, interest rate of 12.5%. Right, I may sometimes go over there. Uh, you know, you got to write inside. Now, the explanation is very straightforward. Um, low uh, financial risk. Right, explanation. It is a good decision. It was a good decision, low financial risk. Why? Financial risk comes from debt equity. Stayed the same. Um, and then low financial risk and the, uh, uh, the gearing as well. Uh, it was a... Um, Positively geared, uh, geared, positively geared, uh, positive gearing, positive gearing, because the return on capital employed uh, is higher. The percentage is higher than the interest rate. Low financial risk, positive gearing. So the 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 them taking the loan was a good thing, right? It was good. Uh, and then the last question I want to do is the Bucker family owns. All right, so in this particular question, I've done it already for you. So they want to know um, what happened after the repurchase, what the repurchase did. So you need to calculate the percentage of shareholding they had in this company before the repurchase. Now, the number of shares before repurchase, if you go to the question, is 1.5 million. These are the number of shares before repurchase. 1.2 million plus 300. They hold or held... 740,000. So 740,000 shares over 1.5 million times 100, they had 49.3% shareholding capacity in this business. But after the, the repurchase, remember, it's minus the 50,000 shares. We were left with 1.45 million shares. They held 740 divided by 1.45 times 100. They now hold 51.03 or 51% of the shares in the business. Now, whenever somebody holds 51% or more shares in the business, they are the majority shareholder. So, and I've, so you, we, the question is explain the effect. We've got to do a calculation to support. The effect is that they now, they are now majority shareholders. That's it, five marks. They are now majority shareholders. All right, so um, that's the first video. A little bit rushed and quick, but I hope that you got something. I'm going to do another one shortly, and I just hope that you enjoyed it, and there'll be a lot more coming for the other topics. God bless you for your trial exam finals. We'll be here to help one another. Start sending in the questions on the YouTube channel and all of the platforms that you find me on, and I'll be there to assist you. If you need any information, 
email me at uh, showyready at gmail.com or uh, showandteach at gmail.com and I'll be there to assist you. Thanks.